right. Happy St. Patty's Day, Colin. How are you, sir? I am doing very well. I was actually going to say, do you have a green screen behind you? And you're like, no, it's St. Patty's well, Day. I was going to surprise you. The T-Rex was going to come out at the end. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm actually, I'm Irish and English. So nice. I, I celebrated today. Now it's, you know, most people would go out to a bar. But once you get old, you drink coffee at night. Absolutely. I think that that's like rookie. Now I'm wired. Like uh, it's like New Year's Eve, right? You don't you don't yeah. bother once you hit New Year's fifty. Eve, I'm out by ten. <laughs> yeah, lame. <laughs> We're glad to be here. Thanks for having me on tonight. I appreciate it. In your festive green background. Thank you so much. And then you're just drinking what moonshine? What is it? Uh, <laughs> flavored moonshine? Drinking? This is Dr Pepper and rum. Oh, there you go. It, it's not green. Well, maybe if we hold it up. There. I'm um. Do you like uh, Captain Morgan's? I do. That's what this is. Spice drum's the best. I really yes. enjoy that. That's good stuff. So I'm I'm a rum and I'm I'm a rum and coke guy. I've been on a uh, a scotch and bourbon kick for a while, but that there you uh, go. That, that You're not playing crazy. around. Yeah, yeah, you can't play around. Like, so for folks that don't know you, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and the channel? Just to get well, hello. Uh, my name is Colin. I go by Bronco Ride on YouTube, and uh, I ride a 2017 Harley Davidson Street Glide Special. Yes, that's Batwing. <laughs> I'm a Batwing fan, and uh, I, I love riding. Absolutely love riding. So, and, and obviously I'm on YouTube too, and I'm glad to be here with you, Brian. So awesome. Thank you so much. Now you ride, um, but you've almost made that into an ultra. It's like a, it's like an ultra light. Thank you for pointing that out um, <laughs> that everybody else does that. Yes. I've kind of converted it. The speakers aren't worth the money. I'm just telling you right now. I, I know oh, it's Lord. just like people are busting my chops. You know, I'm like, Oh, oh I, never. I mean, I got, okay. So I picked up a tour pack and then um, detachable one. That's the way to go. And everyone's like, oh, you'll you'll never take it off. I'm like, oh, yeah, man. I, I like the look of the street glide. And, you know, on my computer right here on the, you know, on the left, I've got a picture of my bike and it's without the, and now I, I think I've taken it off once. Um, the uh, detachable tour packs. So they were right. I was wrong. Everybody says that because I keep wanting to spend the money for the kit. Because like you, I love the look of it without it. It looks it looks cool without it, and it you know, but it's nice to have. It really is. I mean, maybe I'll just take it off with some tools. I'll take a picture, and then put it back. I know. It, it, so yeah, I mean, and and then it just I added a couple more things. It's just like they're like, why don't you just buy a new bike? I love my bike. I really do. I put a lot of work into it over the years, and uh, I enjoy it. I plan on keeping it for a couple more, several more years. So I'm not trading in or anything. So. Why get a new one? And but you're right, it's pretty much I've converted. I think the only thing uh, I don't have the lowers. Yeah, you know, I mean that's pretty much it, and it's obviously different cooled than the ultra. But the other than that, I, the lowers are the other big selling point, right? On an ultra, and yeah. then you have the speakers, and then you have yeah. The and I tell you what, the only the, <laughs> the and reason, I ride solo ninety. I don't care. Yeah, the reason my wife likes having the speakers is because they hug her hips. She do we don't use them but she likes the way that it's more kind of enclosed. So we both know, uh, you know, on YouTube, we have a mutual friend named uh, Bodine 52 and his wife and my wife have become very close. And uh, she sends him pictures. She sent my wife pictures of that backrest. Oh, so my back, I mean, my wife comes in, why can't I have one of these? Why does she get the wrap around? Why does she get this? Why can't you get, and I'm like, you so I'm texting Bob. Well, what you need to do is start texting his wife pictures of your pool. That will make up for that. Will silence the that. Bob shot that down. <laughs> Bob shot that down. <laughs> That's too funny. It's yeah, and it's a hard balance because once you go to a full touring bike, like you said, you sort of take away some of the rawness of the bike. Yeah, I mean, I like that I can just take it off eventually if I ever do. Um, you know, where I could kind of convert it back um to the way i liked it and you know, it's 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 not hard it takes literally five minutes i bought one of those um locking things mm -hmm. so people on youtube you can't steal it uh, <laughs> don't be looking for my tour pack my tour pack because it's locked um but no you can you know take a couple seconds and then take it off and then leave it in your garage and get a stripped down look and it's kind of cool so that that was the biggest reason obviously uh my wife's riding a lot more with me now or attempting to ride more nice with. And so I wanted to get something more for the two of us and for her to lean back on that besides that little 
backrest that normally comes with it. But once you get a tour pack, you have a nice big cushy backrest for her. So she's pleased. And I got to make her happy, man. That's the whole reason I have an ultra look. Fun when the wife we had one of those little Cobra backrests on our uh, Suzuki Intruder. Yeah. And she was always like, oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Then we took a road glide out for a demo. End of story. <laughs> I've done. <laughs> She's like, I want one tour pack. I'm like, you do realize the tour pack's really expensive, right? Because you need the bike. <laughs> I mean, it's it's all it's all subjective, man. I mean, I uh, you know, one of my first bikes I had was a Fat Bob. I saw I, that. That's a nice bike. I mean, oh, dude, I love that bike. That was a blast. Um, and that was actually my first Harley. Um, and I did a stage one on it, and I absolutely, I mean, love that bike. Cause it was, you know, and then you get these freaking things that weigh 10,000 pounds. And then, you know, the ones we ride and then like that one was, you know, under 600 and it's like, you just zip around. I think it was a little yeah. bit that weight boys, but that was fun, but I didn't have any tour pack. I didn't have any saddlebags. I wanted something on either carry a backpack or I could get a like little mini luggage rack, but oh, that was a blast. Now, what did you start with bike wise? That was it. Oh, that started, was it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, 2006 yeah it was 2006 because that was a two i bought it in 06 but it was an 07 uh fat bob and um my neighbor at the time you know i've always liked motorcycles i have and um i've told this story a couple times um i think either on my channel or the streams um that when i was young i have an older sister that was she's four years older than me she was hit by a motorcycle when she was four yeah, I messed her up pretty good. Um, and, uh, you know, after that, obviously, my folks were kind of anti-motorcycle for obvious yeah. reasons. So I didn't grow up in a motorcycle household. Now, I did ride dirt bikes when I was younger, and I rode, and I'm dating myself. This was before they banned them. The three-wheelers, remember the three-wheelers? Now they're Louis all Fanatic had a three-wheeler. You like Absolutely. flip them up and kill yourself. But uh, I rode a couple of those, you know, once my teenage years, and then I always had an itch for it. So I've always wanted a bike. And then a career started, started my family and everything. And then all of a sudden, I think in 2006 range, a neighbor, um, he had a V-Rod, um, you know, Harley V-Rod, you know, and he kept talking about, oh, how I love this bike. And I said, hey, uh, let me let me try it real quick, <laughs> you know, because I remember basics of riding. I hadn't rode in a while. And then I got on that. I'm like, yeah, I'm thinking I might have to get a new motorcycle. <laughs> and um, and that's how it kind of all happened, you know, and I, I kind of got inspired from him. And then um, we went down and started looking at bikes. And that's how I ended up buying a um, my first bike, which was a Harley Fat Bob. Now, there's a caveat to that, that the only way I could get that was if my wife got something in return. Um, the way it works. And um, to this day, I'm not regretting it because I do use it once in a while, but she's more of the one that uses it. It's uh, and she, she got a swimming pool out of it. So she got a swimming pool and I got a bike. I still think to this day I got a better deal. Yeah, Some there you go. Playing. And then now what is that? 15, 16 years later, um, still riding, upgraded. Um, I bought a 16 before they came out with the Milwaukee 8s. So I had this um, 16. It was blue too. Street Glide did a lot of long rides on it. And then I took a um, test ride of the Milwaukee 8. And comparing the old engine to the new one, the Milwaukee 8, I was a, a big fan of. Okay. So I ended up just trading it. And ended up, I think my monthly cost went up five bucks. So I'm like, okay. okay. You know, um, you know, with all, with what I had left on it. So I ended up trading it for 17. So I only rode that one for about a year. And then I got a 17. That's the one I have ever since. So I've had three bikes. Okay. So in the, the so the twin cam was a one of three. Yep. Okay. And what now, what is the difference that you see now? I've ridden I've ridden the Milwaukee once, but it was the first touring bike I ever rode. So to be honest, it could have been anything. Uh, vibration, a lot less vibration. Okay. Um, it's. I think that's probably the biggest thing that I saw. I mean, yeah, obviously there's a lot more to it um, than just the. The vibration but I, I remember that was like a big selling point to them and i'm like it didn't never bothered me on the twin exactly um i mean i like the loud noise i like the shaking of the bike honestly it's kind of a good feeling but they actually tune that down you know it, it could still be there they could actually probably tune it to where it or set it up where it still had that um but it was i saw a good increase in power now that was a 107 uh the way it was um 
Yeah. So you went from like a 103 to a 107. Yeah. And you think a well, big deal, but it was actually a pretty significant deal. A lot smoother. It was a ton smoother than the 103 was. So I, I was enough for me where I got on and said, wow, this is a big enough difference for me. So I went with it and I've uh, been pretty happy with it. I know there's a lot of people out there, you know, the first year that had some issues here and there, but I've been blessed. I haven't had any issues whatsoever and, and I'm golden. So I've added some stuff to it. So, but just a couple things, not too many. <laughs> <laughs> Upgrade happy. That's the, um, that's the thing that I don't like about the Harley Davidsons. And I say this jokingly, but it's like, you can go in there and be like, you know what I want? I want an ostrich for the back. Oh yeah. We have those. <laughs> it's like, you can do anything. It's crazy. It's money pit, man. It's uh yeah, it's, it's absolutely a money pit. People. I mean, it seems like when you go into buying one, it seems like you're, you're going to customize it. You're going to upgrade it. And a lot of people, Oh, why did it just come standard? I don't know. Cause they want to make money. I mean, we, we all know that when we go in and buy those, unless you want to spend 45 grand on a CBO, which I won't do. Well, and I think that there's a there's a bit of pride in ownership because, you know, it may be stupid, but my my foot pegs could be different than yours. Yeah. But it makes the bike mine. It sure. You know, you, you can pull up at bike night and you're never going to run into another bike that's like yours unless it's 100 percent stopped. Yeah, I mean, it, it, dude, as long as you're happy. That's all that matters, man. I mean, I enjoy riding. I don't bust other people's chops when they have a different, you know, if they have the same bike or they do something to it. Or I don't care. It's your bike. Ride it. Enjoy it. Get out and meet people. Ride with them. To me, that's what it's all about. You Absolutely. Know? I don't care what you ride. No. So what got you into, into the whole YouTube thing? I mean, it's oh, just um, well, I've always been in speaking two. of money pits. <laughs> um, I've um I've always been into photography. Okay. Always liked it. Cameras, you know, taking pics and all that stuff. So and you're then, a Canon and Nikon guy? I'm a Canon. Nice. Yeah, I'm a Canon guy. My sister, she doesn't work for them anymore, but she worked for them for like 15 years, Canon. Oh, sweet. So, kind of in the family, but, um, you know, I was hoping she could hook me on some cameras, but that never happened. Damn it. Remember that on her birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, no, I, I like Canons. Uh, they're, they're good. So I always like photography, but more along the video uh, side of things. Um, you know, it's funny in, in school, when I went to college, that was actually going to be uh, what I wanted to get into was television production. Okay. Went, you know, did a lot of different things around that, did radio, television, all that. And then I changed my mind and went into business instead. Okay. Uh, so because there's not a ton of money in um, video production depends on, you know, until you move your way up and sure. talk, depending on the size of the markets and stuff. So I went into business, but I always had that passion for like videography or anything. And I, you know, I always found it fascinating how like editing happened. Like, you know, I remember working at a television station, all how they did all the editing. This was again, back when they had analog cameras, mm -hmm. um, this is, and then they had these uh, big things called one inch VH tapes. Yep. I remember those. And you so had the guy that had to carry the pack. Digital. Yeah, you got to carry the pack. And it reminded me of the Betamax or something like that. I know I'm dating myself, but the, but I was always into it. So long story short, um, I was on YouTube for something. And I just was looking up motorcycles. And I just see this dude um, with a camera on his head. Didn't know anything about it. And I'm like, what the hell is this? So that's kind of cool. And uh, he was filming himself and talking. And this was, I think, 2017, I guess, range. Um, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to try that. So I bought a GoPro and then I strapped it to my helmet. And um, I think at the time I had that um, to get audio. I don't know if you remember this, the GP10, the Cena. Yes. It was like a backpack that hooked to your camera or something. It was all Bluetooth and that's how I did it. And then I totally a hobby. And I just, so I started doing, I'd say my first year, I hardly did anything. Um, and the second year I started doing a lot of group rides um, with folks. And then that's what I love. That's why I always tell the story. It's probably one of my favorite experiences because the guy that I was watching, seems freedom rider, by the way, on YouTube, he's still, he's still active. He lives in okay. And he invited me because we just start chatting on YouTube. He's invited me, said, hey, uh, you want to go 
to this guy's place in North Carolina. He's doing a group ride. And I'm like, oh, why not? You know, I mean, and um, and that guy ended up being McKaylee Seven. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with him or not. Yeah, I know the name. Yeah, he rides a Goldwing now, but years he rode a Harley and good guy. So him and uh, eight others, we all met up. And I didn't know any of these guys. Didn't know any of them. We were just all met through YouTube. And so I trekked all the way down to uh, North Carolina by the Rally Durham area. And we just had a blast, man. And we went around and just toured. He showed us because he, he's from Raleigh. Mike is. And he took us all around uh, that area, different roads. We went out to Carolina Beach, um, you know, stuff like that. And it, and it was a blast. Like NC Stoney was there. Uh, moose um, i'm trying to think all the people that were there there were there were nine of us and they mike called it the hoot nanny that's how he <laughs> classified it and that's and then we did that for like two or three years and that was all through youtube and then the more i did that the more i got into it and the more you realize there's a lot of people out there not a lot but there's a lot of moto vloggers that do similar things that go out there and i always said i do this to meet people that's the only, that was my biggest reason why I got on YouTube is to for the photography, of course, but to meet like minded writers, hang out with them, get to know them. Two of my best friends that we do on the weekly stream, Bob and Jack, we met through YouTube. We met at a when we went to West Virginia and I've met so many cool people. I met people like you. I know you were on our show what was it, like three or four months ago. Yeah. Um, dude, that's awesome. I mean, and, and that's what's so cool about this medium that you can meet the coolest people and 99%, I'd say 99.9% .9 of all the people I've met um, have been just super down to earth. Um, one, no, but other than that, everybody else. Well, yes. It's funny you say that I was watching that video that you did today. I was kind of going through and just kind of refreshing my thoughts. And it's so true what you said, you can meet anyone that rides and 90 percent 99% of those people are the coolest people in the world. Yeah, they really are. Yeah. I mean, I've met one percenters that if you knew from the outside, you'd be like, wow, whoa, you know, and, and I can respect that lifestyle. But when you get to know them as riders, they're just like you and I, you know, they, they ride and they ride for the love of it. You know, there's obviously other things involved in that, but I think it's so interesting that, the commonality that we have really is that brotherhood and sisterhood. Yep. It really doesn't matter what you ride. Like people always, and I'm sure you get it. They talk crap. Oh, you ride a Harley. You're a Harley guy. You don't like anything else. I'm like, dude, I started on a scooter. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't care what you ride. People can bust balls all they want. I mean, I don't care. I mean, I just, I just enjoy it, dude. I mean, I get out there and enjoy it. And, mm -hmm. and you put the two together, it works out well, you know, yeah. you have a YouTube thing and, meeting great people and and then at the same time writing which is the main purpose and getting out there and and that's that's sweet i mean I, I dig it so it's like i it makes me really enjoy life when i'm on two wheels it makes me like enjoy it and then and then and then on the youtube thing sharing it you know sharing experiences with people mm -hmm. sharing trips doing installs or whatever but it's sharing that information and and then seeing your friends do the same thing you know, and, and sharing that and interacting with each other. So it's cool. I mean, it, just like you, you know, like, you know, you, on your channel, like we met through YouTube. Mm -hmm. you know, now all of a sudden you did a live stream with us and now I'm doing one with you. Yeah. And, and, and that's, me. that's how it works, man. I think it's really cool that there's not this, um, we are really all united. And it's really interesting because from the outside of it, when you first get into it, it seems very, uh, clicky and very odd yeah you know and then once you once you start riding and you meet people it's a completely different experience yeah you know what's funny and you know it's are you how do i put this like i guess i'm interviewing you now i'm a so <laughs> i'm turning the tables on you okay no. <laughs> write all these questions i've got for you it, normally like at work you know like right now on this like you know what we're doing this stream or zoom call whatever you want to call it i'm very i this is my normal personality i'm i'm kind of an extroverted person at work at home though i'm very introverted 
And sometimes like you see that a lot with people like on that are moto bloggers mm -hmm. or people that they're actually a um, big part of them is introverted. And mm -hmm. I've always found that funny. And I'm like that too. And it's like certain times when you get in a big setting, even though like, oh my God, he's like, this guy, he could talk his ass off and sorry, um, and, and do all these different things. But in reality is, do you like, when you're in a big group, do you like kind of hang back or are you more that it's, person that takes charge or whatever? I've you? always found that I found it as I've gotten older, I guess maybe I've realized it in myself. I have to turn it on like for work. I can go in and take total control because, you know, I work in IT and I do video production, but at home, I have to turn that on. That's not my normal personality. I'm not throwing barbecues with hundreds of people at my house or anything. Yeah, you know, it's it, it's weird the way that works because they feel like this is comfortable and putting this out to the public is comfortable. But I don't know I'd want to do this in a live room full of a thousand people, if that makes sense. It makes sense. It totally does. Um, I'm like, like, so like on these group rides, that's what I, you know, like, cause we had one, we went to West Virginia. This was, uh, I think a year ago, two years ago. And there were about 30, 35 of us. I had a good time, but I wasn't like out there freaking dancing on the bars doing pole dance or anything. I was, you know, don't take that thought out of your head. It's kind of well, that was probably HDR's job anyway. So. It was a pole dancing. Hmm. <laughs> um, okay. But anyway, I, I mean, I, I just went up, you introduce yourself, say how you doing, get to know people. But it's mm -hmm. a lot of people there were, you know, kind of quiet and introverted. And that's okay. And that's yeah. cool. it's just like, but what we all had in common was motorcycles, you know, that we could sit there and talk or YouTube. Um, you know, we always tell this story. It's the funniest thing when you go to one of these meetups with a bunch of YouTubers, cause you see 30 people doing freaking cameras. Look, 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 me. everyone's in each other's videos, but, um, no, I was just wondering, I was just thinking that cause like sometimes, um, you know, I, I'm, I like being introverted and unwinding cause all day I'm like full of friggin' energy. And then I come home and I just want to just do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> nothing. And, and you know, I think the, how do you find the, the creative process? Like for me, I came from a photojournalism background, you know, yeah. in my early twenties, I shot sports photography, news photography. That's and cool. I kind of I felt like it was always the, it seems cliche, but to me, it wasn't like you didn't take the picture unless you shared it. Right. The yeah. stuff that, you know, it, there was a certain um, process to that. Right. It's like, I, I worked, I did the work. I get to share the work. I get to move on. Um, I like that. But what I was interested to see is that, and I'm finding this more and more, how much of your work that you put out are you good with? And, and maybe that sounds crazy, but I feel like there's this, a lot of the creators I know, they put stuff out and you talk to them about it and they're like, ah, it's crap. You know what I mean? Or well, was it always our biggest critic? Mm -hmm. That's human nature no matter what, you're always going to be hard on yourself and other people. Correct. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You're always going to challenge yourself to do better or anything. At least that's, and it's so funny because like other people that have that mentality, I'm like, Oh, you're fine. You're fine. And I'm like, wait a minute. I do that. I always challenge myself to do better. So, um, so your question is around creativity and is it too much work? I want to make sure I understand. Well, no, I guess what I was asking is what do you find is like sort of the, it's an odd question, but what do you find the ratio of, because you've, your channel has been established for a while, of what you're putting out versus what you're excited about putting out? If, if that I, makes any sense. Here's the thing. If I, if I watch it, and I, we all do this, I'm going to watch it. I'm like, does it tell a story? Is it interesting? I'm not going to, okay, I hope I get a hundred likes out of this one. Yeah. No, I, honestly, I, I care more about interaction and, 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 and making people smile. Honestly, I like crack it up. That's my personality. And then, or if I'm doing an install video, I look at it as I want to help. I want to help somebody. If I was watching this, would it be beneficial? Mm -hmm. You know, like that type stuff from an install. Um, if I was telling a story, would someone be interested? So that's how I look at it. And if, and if I do that, then I'll post it. Okay. You know, I mean, there's not a lot of videos I 
get home and I'll say, Ooh, that sucked. Um, sometimes I think there's been a handful, um, unless it's like a, a topic I don't want to discuss or anything, or I went off sure. in a tangent. Um, but for the most part, I, dude, it's just fun. I mean, it's fun for me and I enjoy it as a hobby. And I don't look at the, from a, a creative standpoint where I'm so hypercritical of myself, of course, I want to put out good work. And of course mm -hmm. I want people to enjoy it. No one's going to put out a video and say, well, I, I did this just to piss off people. Yeah. Or I did this just so everybody would dislike it and not watch it. No, of course you put out stuff that you want people to enjoy. Um, but I'm not going to beat myself up over it's not perfect. Yeah, no, I think that that's good. Because I mean, you you have a you have a solid base and you see that on your your Sunday live streams. I mean, it's the same people, which yeah. I think is awesome. It, it's it grows that community. Yeah, I mean, it, and, and that's fun. I mean, uh, we, um, we do this fireside chat every Sunday. So shameless plug. No, it's a great plug. Sunday it's a great standard, program. Eastern standard time fireside. <laughs> what was that again? <laughs> That again is 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Fireside Chat with the Boys. Um, with Harley Day Rider or, or Bodie 52 and myself, we did this. You're the star of the program, right? No, I'm not. Uh, the three of us, we feed off each other. And that's what's cool is we and we're all good friends. Yeah. So we've said this. We talk a lot during the week. Um, you know, we text. We talk more uh, with each other than our wives, which is sometimes a good thing. Let's see if she <laughs> Sure oh, you're going to get hurt for that. Maybe she's outside. Um, but anyway, um, I think we were just talking and we've done this for a year now. I think almost a year. I think we started in what, February, March, April last year. I don't remember. Um, hey, let's just try a live stream and see what it's like. The three of us got on there and just started talking about stuff. And the next thing you know, um, a year later, we're still doing it. And we That's took awesome. off like, I think, six weeks during Christmas time. Um, but other than that, um, and we just try to have a different guest on every week and feed off each other and have fun. And it's a blast. And we keep I, it in an hour. I think it's great that things can organically grow that way. Yeah. It's not forced. You know, you. It's fun. I mean, honestly, we enjoy it. And that's mm -hmm. the most important. You know, it's not it's not forced. And if we have a bad show, we have a bad show. If we have a good show, we have a good show. It's not going to be polished. It's going to be real. And what happens, happens. That's fair. Yep. So, I mean, you have what over four thousand subscribers right now? I no. Uh, what do I have? I don't know. I think around thirty-four something. Okay. Thirty-four something. Fifty. So, for people that are starting out, I mean, do you have any advice for those people to to? Oh, yeah. Uh, what do you think I'm going to say? What does everybody say? What is the number one answer you always hear when you get asked this? Come on. Post every week. No. <laughs> post daily vlogs <laughs> be yourself be yourself that's and fair you know what guys no matter what you're not i mean if you're going in this to say i want to be the most liked that's not the way to go just be yourself and it, it'll happen organically if people like you they like you if they don't they don't it's the internet right um, some people do great and have an infectious attitude and people join on and that's awesome. And some people it's a slow grind, you know, at the end of the day, it's my same vision or motto of YouTube is to have fun and to meet like-minded people. Okay. Not to, not to grow the fastest, not to be the biggest, not to be the best, just to have fun. And that's worked for me. You know, some people aren't like that. Some people are a lot more, I want to see my sub growth go through the roof. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I respect that. There's nothing wrong with that. Every It's your channel. You do what you want with it. It's just something I do. But I always tell people, though, don't be fake. Um, you know, I mean, do I, am I always this energetic? Because I have eight cups of freaking coffee in me right now. <laughs> um, but normally I am. I mean, I'm a talker. I, I like talking. And I like sharing. Um, there's nothing fake. You know, I just I, I, I like it. I am who I am. What is that Popeye? Um, but if, if you like me, great. If you don't, that's OK, too. You know, that's fair. I try to I try to get along. I'm the type of guy. I'm just I'm very laid back. I always say I'm just a dude on a bike, man. Just dude on a bike having fun. And uh, and to me, that's what it's all about. OK, so be yourself. Why, you, if you answer posting weekly. 
What's yeah. that? Well, they, people always tell you that, you know, you always hear this. And I, I found, um, I don't know if you follow Gary V. That's, uh, he's, he's a, um, I don't even know what his, what his title would be. He's a, um, he's an investor, but he does a lot of social media. And I, and I saw a program on him the other day. And he basically was saying that you take everyone's advice and then just throw it out the window. Because to your point, everyone's going to tell you the same thing. Yeah. Right. Everyone's going to tell you, be yourself. If you watch any of the YouTube, uh, the think media is it's, oh, you have to post at seven o'clock every Sunday or, you know, you shouldn't post on Mondays. You should only post on X day. And his whole thing is to, you know, just sort of do what works for you. Yep. To, and to your point, you know, there's days when like this program, I don't do it every week. Why? Because just some weeks I don't have it in me. And to me, that's the balance, right? I'd rather give it a genuine content than to post. I, I, I think what you said is accurate, though. It, you should post consistently. I mean, but I would rather post better quality than post in, 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 instead of posting consistency, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, no, I understand. So don't just throw up a video because, oh, it's a weekly video and I have to throw one up. There's been times I've gone three weeks without one, but usually I'm weekly. But if not, then I'll do it every three weeks. It's, you know, this is not my number one priority. Yeah. It's not, I do it for fun. And, you know, so if stuff, stuff happens in life, man, you got to take care of that first. And I think that that's important. I think that there's a lot of, and, and again, it's all on how you view it, but it's not a business. I'm not, I'm never going to quit my job. So it's at the end no. of the day, it's just, an no, you're not going to retire off YouTube unless you're super, super big. Yeah. <laughs> they don't. Yeah. Yes, out of it. Unless I become Peter McKinnon, which would be nice, but yeah, they I'm sure they make some money. I mean, yeah, you can make a lot of money if you've got tons and tons of followers. You you can, but that's that's not what it's about. You know, no, absolutely. I do it. I monetize because I hey, why not? No, absolutely. I mean, it's it's all I'm doing is you're just hitting a skip button after five seconds, you know. <laughs> so I mean, some people don't dig that. Okay, I get it, but it's not the end of the world. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, if it offsets your, uh, your gear or your investment, yep, which that's how I look at it, it's a good, now you're a GoPro guy. I'm a GoPro guy. Okay. Cause you had an Osmo at one point, right? I have an Osmo. Well, okay. I, okay, I'm a DJI GoPro guy. Okay. Was, now, how do you, how do you like that? How do you find that mixing the two of them? Cause I've always been curious about it because I use the DJI a lot for handhelds. Okay. When I'm walking around. I always use the GoPro on the bike. Um, could I use the DJI on the bike? Yeah, it, it's pretty, it, it's, it has different features than the GoPro, but overall they're honestly pretty similar. They just got one has one and one has another um, feature or something like that, but they're both good cameras. Um, I think GoPro has the action camera market pretty solidified. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think they're the best. I think their nine is really solid camera yeah. um, and the, the nine is so um that's what i use i mean i use um gopros and then i have the dg osmo and i use the for communication i use the the hell it called cenas okay the 10c and, and then you now you were saying in photography do you use any do you use a mirrorless or digital slr at all no okay i was just kind of curious no You're no in a drone too right you have a dgi you have a drone yeah it's um got it like three years ago it's the mavic air pro I believe nice it's. um yeah it's like it's it's there a lot of people are buying that newer model now i'm, I'm like drawing a blank on the name um i love that thing it's fun it's just yeah. a it, it's a uh, it's a good toy to play with, get some cool shots and play around with it. And I, again, I did it for photography because it's like, what am I going to do? Have a drone fall behind me and I'm riding my bike and trying to control it. Yes. They have these different features. <laughs> <on it. laughs> I remember when I first got and this is before they had the, um, before I knew anything about where they had the feature where it follows you and stuff. So you can hit it, but I'm like trying to find a mount. Well, how can I put a mount on the bike and I control the drone I got my throttle in one hand and try, and I'm like, this isn't going to work. <laughs> and see, that's why I don't want one because I feel like <laughs> just with the video portion of it and getting mirrorless, like I feel like it's a rabbit hole. And I know that if I got a drone, it would lead into like another drone and more drones. And yeah, it's, yep. it's, it's definitely a rabbit hole for sure. It is a rabbit hole for sure. 
So in catching up on your channel, I saw your video about the Pan America where you sat down and talked to the GM of the dealership. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, to me, it's a, it's a pretty exciting market for Harley to get into. Yeah. I mean, it's first, it's cool that I, you know, the guy that runs that place, his name's Lyndon, super down to earth guy. And, and I love my dealership. Um, um, they go out of their way uh, to take care of you. And that's not just because of me personally, because I have a camera in their face. They're just like really down to earth people. So I asked him, cause this guy's like a, a total moto geek. Um, he'll, he'll talk freaking engines all day. And, um, and so like, I just asked him a question when that first came out, I think on February 22nd, I called him and I started, cause I've always been interested in the ADB markets. Mm -hmm. I've always been interested in those type bikes. Um, I've talked about it before. Like if I were to get an X bike, I'd probably get a KTM, um, along with my road couch that I have now, um, <laughs> you know, and yours as well. Cause I, I love my bike. So anyway, as comfortable um, as this office chair too. I go down there and he starts talking all this stuff. And, and then I'm like, um, Hey, listen, is it cool if I film you? Because I wanted to share this because a lot of people like you is, and, and they had all this training. I guess the motor company gave them all this training materials that, and uh, I mean, he's a pretty smart guy when it comes to all this stuff anyway, but he was going in all this said, Hey, why don't we just film this and share it on YouTube? And so sure enough, I go down there and he speaks to me for like a half hour about all the ins and outs of the bikes. Um, I absolutely love this bike. Um, you know, and, and like we address some common things like, is it going to be for like a certain niche or is it going to carry over from Harley riders that ride like what you and I ride right now to that ADV market? It could. You know, I think there's some, I think there's going to be some people that say, absolutely not. I think there's going to be a lot of people that say, you know what, that's a pretty cool bike if for the people that want to get into ADB riding. And, and that's not for everybody, right? You know, not everybody wants to get off road or, you know, I mean, even though it's not just off road, it's on and off, but it's like, that's a different style of riding. You know, it's something that I've always wanted to do. And with Harley coming out with that product, it's pretty intriguing, <laughs> you know, some of the stats they had and, and, and I was very, and I think a lot of people were, I thought that thing when they were first announced is probably going to come around 25, 26,000. They were going to price themselves out of the market. So when that came out with the special, I think the regular one's like 18,000 or 17,500, mm -hmm. if I remember right. And the special, I think is right at 20 grand. And then you can get some options. It ends up being like 22 with options and stuff, 23,000, depending on what you put on it. It's pretty uh, comparable to your other manufacturers, your BMWs and um, you know your KTM's and different different ones, and 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 they nailed it. I mean, I, I like the look of it. I mean, it's it, it's a pretty solid bike, man. I mean, I, I was I was very impressed with the amount of work that they went into the Revolution Max. That they you know they they did their homework, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I like that that adaptive suspension. If you know what that is, whether you stop and it lowers yeah. two inches, uh, that's cool as hell. I mean, I probably won't need it because I'm tall, but, you know, that's really good for the shorter riders because your ADV bikes are higher. I mean, what do you think? You like it? I, I think that uh, I won't lie. I was kind of like, okay, now they're going to come out, you know, with the Corvair, you know, it was some crazy thing that they <laughs> thought of. But what I thought was impressive was, and I'm not – this is my first Harley. I mean, I love my Harley. I love the brand, but I'm a techie guy. And I thought that it was interesting to see that you could come out with 150 horsepower out of a smaller displacement engine, which is what the European bikes have done and make it liquid cooled, which makes me wonder what they could do with my bike. You know, if you put 1100 CC engine in my bike at 150 horsepower, it would be a monster. Yep. It would just be straight up a beast. And, and I think that the it needs to be a different market. And I think that the ADV market is having an ADV bike. I had a, a KTM, you know, with all the side bags and all that on it. That bike, you know, I saw one or two water crossings. But the best part about that bike was it was a 365-day-year bike. Yep. It wasn't about riding across the plains of Africa. It was about riding in all weather, to me at least. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to appeal to a lot of people. You know, I think it's promising, you know, because honestly, let's be honest, 
in the last two years, it's just been nothing but over and over, over and over, just bashing Harley, this, this, and, you know, some deserve it, some not, you know, it's like they're trying to turn a corner, you know, they're trying with the yoke and Zeitz and trying to get some different leadership in there. And I, you know, I think we brought this up as one of our questions on our live stream once that how do we think he's doing? You know, I mean, everyone's going to be a Monday morning quarterback, no matter what, you know, and I, I love Monday morning CEOs that want to run a company and, you know, cause I'm a business guy, so I can talk business. So I get yeah. what, what they're doing. Um, and I'm not trying to put anybody down with that, but it's like, you always hear the folks, they need a rider that runs the company. Yeah, that helps. Absolutely. Um, he rides, you know, is he, a, you know, is he like that um, person that you see in the movies? Probably not. But has anybody read up on their hardwire plan? Their 70, 20, 10, where 70 percent of their business are catering to the existing riders, mm -hmm. the ones that we are right now. 70 percent, 20 percent is new, you know. And 10% is new innovations, but 20% of it's like your electric division and um, your ADB market, stuff like that. You know, they spun off the division. A lot of people don't even know that they spun off the division for um, their e-bikes, not the electric bike, not the electric motorcycles, the e-bikes. Yeah. You know, where Serial it's a one company. Or... I think it's called Serial One, mm -hmm. uh, you know, made by Harley. Um, but I like how they did that. That's a cost-cutting measure. They, they're doing different things to reduce expenses to get more relevant again and they're making some good decisions on things i mean i hope they are i mean i'm just i'm looking at it i think in a two or three years you're going to see some a positive upswing because harley's had some you know bad times and i'm hopefully they listen um you know make some good decisions listen to people that ride mm -hmm. day in day out and um you know i you know with what they're doing with the pan america What's funny is Pan America was involved before Yoke and Zeitz even started. So mm -hmm. that was previous. Um, now it's coming to fruition. And, um, you know, I think it's going to do extremely well for Harley. I do. I think it's going to bring in some, maybe some new riders, but I think honestly, you're going to, you're going to see a lot of people that are going to be, um, have some um, positive things about that bike. You know, I think once it comes out, you know, with their, um, with what they're doing with it, you know, right now I, I like it, you know, and I think that revolution max engine, you know, I think what you said earlier, when you said if they're going to put it in a bag, that was actually one of the questions I asked him. And he said, I don't think they're going to take out the Milwaukee eight and just add a revolution max into a street glide. And then boom, and it doesn't work that way. They're going to have to redesign it, but they could, you know, I mean, we'll see what happens with the new engines and, you know, that I think it's that 1250 custom that might be yeah. later year. Well, and I, I mean, as you look at the the European standards for um, pollution, that they're going to have to eventually do away with an air cooled engine. So, I mean, it's it's going to be a while. Yeah, but but yeah, at but some point, you some, know, it's going to be a long while. And a lot of people are like, "Oh no, all we're going to have is the live wires." No, that's not true. I mean, you're always going to have your combustion, but it's um, it's the way of the future, man. I mean, and especially with him, because he's like an environmentalist. So I know mm -hmm. he's, I mean, but still 70% of his business, he's focusing on the core. And and that, that's good news. You know, he's not more worried about opening up everywhere in the entire country. He's trying to more centralize things. And, and some growing pains are going to happen. You know, ultimately, dude, we just ride and we enjoy what we ride. And we, yep. I, I, you know, like any motorcycle company, I, I wish Indian success, Polaris, I, I wish KTM and all these manufacturers success because it's all right, right? It's a niche market. It's a specialty market for motorcycles. And and I'm, I'm looking at it from a standpoint of I, if I want to see it succeed because competition, you know, or breeds innovation. innovation, you know, and it's like, and, and that's what I dig about it. So I think it'll do well. What I, are you, what are your thoughts on the, line? I, 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 I kind of got it off on a tangent. Sorry. Yeah. Start rambling a little bit. I tend to do that. What are your thoughts on the live wire? I mean, do you think that, I mean, from what I thought from a development standpoint, I thought it was brilliant. Do I think it's it a right? 30,000 hour bike that everyone needs? Probably not. You thought it was what? I didn't hear you. I, I think from, from a price point, it's, kind of ridiculous that it's a 30,000 hour bike compared to, you know, being the same price as an ultra. 
but having written it twice, the technology is stunning. I mean, I think that they, they put it out of the park. You wrote it and I wrote it. It is an amazing bike. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. It is so much fun. It's not practical for me, uh, yeah. but it's an amazing bike. And a lot of people don't realize how freaking sweet that bike is to ride. You got to try it if you don't, because, but you know, it's it, with any brand new thing. I know my little prediction. I think it's a prediction. That's my guess is probably by the summer, they're going to come out with a, another reiteration of the live wire, probably smaller, um, cheaper, uh, you know, you, the, the live wire is a, a super luxury item. Was just, they didn't go in thinking they were going to sell a million of those. And, you know, it's funny. There's a misnomer about that. Do you know, um, if, what would you say the perception of how that did? I think from the quote, Harley fanboys, it was a fail. Yeah. I think from people on the outside, it made a statement. Do you know it was the number one electric selling bike last year? Really? That's interesting. Yep. I didn't know that either. I learned that and I'm like, really? So now, Euro has like five from, miles. So stats came from who do you think? Harley. Yeah. But you know, and but compared to like, was it zeros and stuff? I mean, I I I like I any mean, it's a cool bike. It's not practical for me if they do different things and, and obviously technology and the, you know, the future, they're going to have probably better R and D on a better technology. So we can get like better electric motorcycles because right now the cars, the bikes, they can't compare with the size of the battery. So you're not yeah. going to get those long distances on it. I mean, like, you know, if that thing got 500 miles and it was a bagger and <laughs> it might be different, you know, it might be a, a good seller, but it was fun to ride, man. You know what I'm talking about when you. Oh, I, I, that I thing, it's insane the torque on that. That's when like, I took it out, I had my GoPro, but I didn't have a mic at the time, and I only wish I would because I was screaming like a little girl. I mean, that's that bike went from zero to seventy five and faster than I realized what was going on. Same. <laughs> it was so much fun to ride. It really was. And the thing that I thought was interesting was there was a lot of. Um, what you would think of as Harley riders, a lot of bagger riders there. Yeah. And I had lunch with a bunch of those guys and a lot of people said the same thing. You know, this reminds me why riding's fun. Yeah. No shifting. It was just pure enjoyment. It was almost like being on a Schwinn, you know? Gonna, I mean, honestly, it's not going to appease to um, probably majority of the people. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's definitely an experience, but I, you know, it, it, it has a market. And it has a market one day and and hopefully that because that price is a little steep obviously it's you know but i look at it i also look at it you know i know a lot of people compare it to zero and all that stuff with price but it's it's a it's a better made electric mm -hmm. motorcycle one um what was the tesla you know how much the tesla cost when it first came out Ab absorb a huge amount of twenty thousand dollar car yeah, and now, you can, get one for now you can get them so the prices have dropped obviously but it's her first model so we'll we'll see i mean it's i think that that would be the interesting model is to have an experimental line for lack of a better word because there's talk about what the legacies not the legacy the um the revival that they hinted about it's going to be yeah. it would be kind of neat to have a platform that's a little bit more left of center and then sort of still deal with the 70 percent of riders yeah i mean I, I i i like the way they're going i think i mean off the record the well not off the record it's on the record it's being recorded <laughs> their marketing department is to be desired mm -hmm. I'm a fan of their marketing i think they're they need an overhaul they do but but I think that it's um, – I think it would be interesting to sort of, you know, take the approach that most businesses do. You have a line of products that are a little bit more out there. Yeah. And then you have that 70% that you're, you're trying to bring in. You know, not everybody needs the Rolls Royce, but, you know, it's – Yeah, I just – It's interesting. It is. Cool. Because the tech and Harley Davidson don't seem to go together, at least in the current mindset. Yeah, but are we buying these bikes for their tech? I want Apple CarPlay. I'm going to be honest. 
I don't care. I just have Spotify, dude. It was like just, I don't mean, I some people might want Apple CarPlay, but no, no, it, I mean, it, the tech is nice, but it doesn't, I mean, I like tech. Trust me. I'm like you, I'm a, I'm a tech geek, you know, but I have more tech on my helmet and my freaking GoPros and true. than we do on the bike, you know, but sometimes it's cool just to ride a bike, you know, and not there, there is a balance, you know what I'm saying? So it is, but I mean, I'm glad I have, a stereo on it that's fun when you're riding and even though it's stock and after 50 miles an hour i can't hear it but, <laughs> you know but, or maybe 60 i don't know but it's 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 fun for me you know but I mean? to your point the the biggest seller that i had in my head before i owned an ultra was i wanted gps because i wanted it GPS is nice but the i mean let me ask you something do you use google maps ways or do you use the harley gps that's where i was getting with it i can't see the gps with a full face helmet on because i'm too tall with the hammock seat so the 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 gps sits right at the bottom of the helmet so i can't see it so it it, it takes away from why i thought it would be a good bike and then you go and you buy a quad lock mount and now with 12 inch bars, my GPS is up here. There you go. So, you know, it, again, it, it's to your point, a phone would have solved the problem. Yeah. I mean, I honestly, when I had the GPS on trips, I use my phone. That's I, what I'm finding. This is the first, I got the mount in the fall. And I, the first time I took it out and could talk to it, I was like, oh, this is brilliant. Yeah. I mean, I just use, the only time I like using the Harley GPS is like when I'm on a Kirby road. And you could a little bit bigger screen, so you can mm -hmm. see the curve coming, and that helps. But if I trust that Harley GPS, I'm going to end up in a freaking lake someplace. Turn right here. <laughs> the best part about the Harley app on the bike is that it can't find the dealership that it's programmed to find. <laughs> a trip. Turn left here. Recalculating. It tells you the dealer, you've arrived at the dealership. Meanwhile, the dealership's like to the left and 800 feet down the street or something. It's nice. Hysterical. That's funny. So I guess as we wrap it up, first off, thank you so much for being so generous with your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's been awesome. And so and what's cool about this, we had, you know, like we had no plans this. Like when you called, you just said, hey, listen, we're just going to chat. And I love that. They're just two guys, you know, shooting the shooting the breeze just for like an hour. How long have we been? I don't even know how long. About an hour. About an hour. Uh, and it's just flown by, you know, just hey. talking about there. So I appreciate it. It's been fun. Oh, no. So before we close, where can folks find you on social media? Uh, if they want to follow you. What's my name again? What's Colin? your name again? I don't know. <laughs> you know, I never, I don't know. If someone asked this, you know how many times I say my name? my YouTube name in my videos. I think I've said it like twice in the past, like maybe 50 videos. Oh, that's I funny. rarely say my name. That's true. Cause you only start out with, this is Colin. Yeah. I'm simple dude. I'm like, Hey, it's Colin. What's up? That's I mean, funny. people know where they're at. Right. I mean, it's, I think they do. Fair enough. And then when you type in Bronco ride um, in YouTube, what you're going to see is you're going to see my name come up and you're also going to see a bunch of cowboys on bulls, um, which I always think is funny. Like, or, or or you're going to see like Ford Broncos or something like that. So all these different things. If you don't know this, uh, I grew up in Denver and uh, oh, nice. I'm, a, I'm a diehard sports fan and um, I follow this team called the Denver Broncos. So that's where my name came from. So it was, it's a lame name. Um, no, nah, it's not a lame name. Uh, horrible. I just like hey, a football team and I ride. Let me put him together. <laughs> I'll go ride. I mean, that's stupid, but I kept it and it just, you know, I made a logo. I'm like, ah, I don't feel like changing it. So that's, you know, that that's my name. So it's Bronco ride on YouTube. Um, I, um, I do usually once one video a week. I, I love interacting with folks. I do a Sunday night live stream with a couple friends of mine. We do it every week called the fireside chat with the boys, with Bodine 52 and Harley date rider. That's a, that's a must see in my opinion. Yeah, it's fun, dude. It's so much fun. Um, but honestly guys, I mean, I, I do moto vlogs. I do, um, uh, what are those things called? Installs, <laughs> walk arounds, you know, I do first rides, all that stuff. Honestly, I just get out there and have fun, man, and enjoy life. And, you know, and I just want to film it and share it with you guys. And then I do that, that, that other thing. What's it called? The Instagram. Thing. The gram of Insta. 
the, the gram of Insta where I take a picture like once a week, like, hey, look, there's my bike. Done. I mean, that's it. That's all Here's you my do. bike by a lake. Here's my bike by a mountain. My bike by a sign. Here's me. No, it's, yeah, that's, you know, hey, that's I'm, awesome. Like, freaking selfie, look. But yeah, and then I have like Facebook Bronco ride page, but you cool. know, like, that, that's it. You know, I, again, I do this for fun and, 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 I, and I really appreciate you uh, having me on, dude. It, oh, I, I really appreciate it. I appreciate what you've done for the community. I mean, you guys have, I mean, yourself as well as, you know, your Sunday night, you've really brought a lot of people out to, you know, expose them to yeah, a larger audience. I've met a lot of people through there too. You know, it, it's, it's wild that, you know, and then, you know, cause I know everybody that people that watch not all comment and that's okay. You know, it's, but it's more the, you know, seeing the people, different people and, and then the banter between everybody having fun. And, and, mm-hmm. and that's cool. I, I enjoy that's, you know, seeing people interact and, promoting our wonderful hobby of motorcycling it's great absolutely awesome so anything else you want to uh you want to throw out there to promote shamelessly or uh i don't know is there something i'm missing Should I no yeah i mean if you're interested in me go awesome. take a look at my channel if you're not go look up freaking donkeys broncos <laughs> cars cowboys i'm not a cowboy I did do this. Um, I rode a horse once and I did a horse vlog. Yeah, I tried that. That's pretty. That scary. was like an old video. That was like one of my first videos because my one of my wife's friends owns a horse farm. So I'm like, hey, I got an idea. I'll go put a helmet on and do a horse vlog. You know, and of course, um, I don't really know how to ride a horse too well. I only rode one like twice in my life. So I'm like, can you move? Move. That was fun. I found riding the horse scarier than the motorcycle. That was uh, that was definitely unnerving. All I pictured is is me getting off that horse and then his hind legs, like in John Wick, and he knocked him out. That's what I picture. <laughs> <laughs> and the freaking goats will come over and laugh at me. All their farm animals while I'm on the ground bleeding profusely. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate it. I'm going to put all the links in the description. So make sure you check out Bronco Rides channel. And as always, thank you very much. Thanks, dude. Appreciate you having me on and bye, everybody. Thank you.